My name is Bethany Rainey. I'm living in Southern Pines, North Carolina. I was a conjoined twin. Sternum through the pelvis, separated at five months with my sister. When I was conjoined, the leg was fused and it wasn't viable. So after the separation, me and my twin were both amputees. When I was a kid, it was kind of, it was kind of just a blast. Like there was, um, like I was out in Oklahoma at the time and it was me and I also had my sister as an amputee. It was fun and my parents did a really great job of making like doctor's appointments fun. Like, you know, they give you a coloring book or some treats or something. You know, they, they were really good about it. And because it was since birth, my family, they always, they, they were adjusted to it, you know, they, they never like treated us as like disabled. I was three or five, like when it like pretty, pretty young when I got my first uh, prosthetic leg. I didn't wear my prosthetic that much when I was young. I, I like just like hopping around everywhere, which like to think of doing that now, I'm like, gosh, my knee. Um, but I was just like all over the place. And I had one of those like really loud, noisy walkers that I was just like, like, tearing apart the grocery store, like running around in. Um, you know, and my mom would just like, you know, we'd, we'd face plant because we'd like, I'd be running around um, wearing my prosthetic or on the walker, um, you know, and like a lot of kids fall over, you know, I just fall and my mom would be like, okay, like get up. <laughs> and like the other moms would just look at her like she was a monster. <laughs> I think I used to pay a lot of attention to other people's awkward, like trying to like defuse a situation like, oh gosh, <laughs> you know, like, um, and then like it didn't, like I didn't say anything if I felt uncomfortable, like if they were like rude or something. When I've never had somebody like, you know, be overtly discriminatory or ableist or something, but um, you know, you get the little like microaggressions, like, someone coming up to me and before they like ask me my name they're like how'd you lose your leg I'm like I don't know you like <laughs> you know it's just kind of weird awkward like but I, I when I was younger I used to put up with it a lot more and now I'm kind of just like I don't have time for it when you get older you kind of learn how to fight for your own joy and you know come into yourself that way Going into middle school, uh, a big hurdle I had to figure out with prosthetics was just the look of it. Most of my legs were, were functional, but I was very insecure about having it. I wanted it to look like it was a real one. I wanted to be able to wear leggings and stockings and all that stuff. And it would just drive me nuts because I'd get these foam covers and they'd shrink and just... Uh, so, I mean, like, I think, you know, as I got older, it just like, I was just like, wow, like I'm, I'm, like I'm putting in so much effort to try to like make this look like a real leg. Like it, it's not, like that's, that's not who I am. Like, and like that, that's okay. I've lived a lot of different places and I've been to a lot of different prosthetists. Um, so I was just kind of, when I moved to Southern Pines, I just was trying to check a box and just like, okay, here we go. Let's start this process all over again. It was kind of just day one, like everyone was seemed invested. Everyone just like took the time to try to figure out what I was looking for, what, what worked for me. And then also just kind of like upping my game, like trying to figure out like, okay, this is what you've had. How can we do things better? Like, and it was just, it was really cool. Like my, uh, my prosthetist, Troy, he, <laughs> I mean, he brought in physical therapists, he brought in different knees and different equipment for me to try, like just, I, I honestly don't think I've ever had like this level of care and just, just like not walking away from a leg appointment frustrated is very new for me. Like I, I've been walking out of these recent appointments with Sand Hills just like, just like hyped, like really excited, like can't wait to try out this new thing that he's talking about. Like it's just, it's different and it's really exciting. Before getting this new prosthetic, 
I think I was kind of just stuck in a place like mobily. Like I just, you know, my my leg, it was it was foam, so like I, I was always worried about getting it dirty and it, it was it was a pediatric knee and it just kinda I was used to it breaking all the time and like that was kinda just that was my my norm. So with this new one it's opening up what I might be able to do physically, like this new leg is more durable. It's, I, I've been talking to my sisters about like, hey guys, like maybe we wanna hike, maybe we wanna camp, you know, and that's just not something like, you know, they look at me like I'm, <laughs> like they're waiting for the punchline because that's not what I do. I feel like I wanna try new things and like see see what this thing can do because apparently it can go in water and not be wet and that that itself is a game changer and I would 100% recommend Sand Hills Orthotics to anybody like new way to sit new way to walk new way to go upstairs like it just it's really cool I think a big thing that I've always been interested in is trying to like you know I I went on this journey about like advocating for myself and I think something that I would be really excited to do is just try to like get involved advocating for other amputees or working with other amputees I think um, like part of this leg for me is like visibility like having a, a prosthetic that's visible and being around maybe other amputees, I, I went to a, I went to a camp when I was younger that um, I didn't really expect to be impacted by seeing older, like teenagers and adult women who were disabled, and they weren't like you know like climbing mountains. They were just like living their lives and being cool, and I like wanted to be them. But I think a goal for me would be to maybe be that for someone else. But I just like want to be okay with myself, so other people can feel okay being themselves. I think for other people going through similar things or just different adversity, I think it's just important to remember to be patient with yourself, uh, be kind to yourself. Um, and it's, it's it's cliche as it sounds, but like it doesn't, you can't waste your time worrying about what other people have to say. You're just, you got better things to do.